Um, and I'm truly delighted uh, to talk to you about, uh, you know, creating long-term value in the times of uh, Black Swan events. I'm hoping that at some point Nizam uh, comes back on. His internet um, is giving a little bit of problems. Um, so, um, you know, uh, and I don't really want to keep you guys waiting um, to all of you. So thank you very much for joining us. I hope you can hear me um, and you can, uh, you know, put the questions um, on your, on your, um, on, on the, on the, um, you know, chat boxes and I'm sure that hopefully I'll be able to see some of them um, and, and then kind of get through uh, and answer them as well. So what I'm going to do is um, I have uh, about maybe around 17, 18 slides. So what I will do is I'll go through the slides uh, initially uh, and maybe um, hopefully Nizam will come back on. Maybe we'll also, I'll be also able to see your questions and then take your questions as well. Um, if you do have questions in between, uh, maybe you can and, uh, type them in. And maybe we will see whether we can get some of them um, going as well. Um, so I think we can get underway. Um, I hope all of you can hear me um, and see me. Uh, we have two polls um, as well. I'm hoping that um, Yeah, so you can put your questions. Um, I think we have, uh, yeah, I think Ramiz has said he can. Yes, that's good. Thank you. Um, and what we can do is we can, uh, we have a couple of polls as well, which I want to do um, at some point, um, which I'll do after I get to maybe slide number four or five. Um, and also, you will get the, the slides uh, for you can actually download it um, now. Um, so don't worry about it, and, and uh, they will send you the presentation as well. Um, so don't worry uh, about getting the presentation as well. Um, the best way to contact me is via email, imran and chrisy.com. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. I share a lot of content um, all the time. Not much on Twitter, but quite a lot on, on, on LinkedIn. Um, what is, is a black swan event? Um, Look, um, a Black Swan event is something that is, you know, characterized by how rare it is, right? Um, the severe impact that it has. And after looking back at it, uh, people coming and saying, look, we could have seen this, right? Now, uh, we at, at Pressing, we have warned our clients uh, that the at the end of 2020, this warning was given two years ago, right? That there will be a global economic and financial crisis, and that will be caused mainly because of corporate and private debt. Uh, and it will be a black swan event, a, a severe event, right? Extremely rare. Um, and we have also talked to them about, about a pandemic debt as well. So it's not a surprise for us, but apparently it was to the large part um, of, of um, uh, of the corporate and political world. Um, these events happen, you know, uh, very rare. Okay. Uh, good examples could be um, the 2008 global financial crisis. I'd say a better black swan event, uh, two black swan events are the, uh, of the Great Depression of the 1920s uh, and the 1918 uh, pandemic that occurred. Um, I think those two were, two were, two were classic examples of, of black swan events. 9-11 also, to some extent, uh, extreme rarity uh, impact was severe, particularly on, on markets um, and, and, and political systems. Uh, and obviously, when you look at look at look back at it, there's enough of breadcrumbs around the way where you can say, "Hey, you know, we could see this happen." Um, they used to be rare, but I think uh, going forward with the kind of imbalances that we have built within our financial systems, uh, some of these events are going to become a lot more regular. Um, and I'll talk to you about that a little bit later. Um, where are we now? It's always good to you know take stock of where we are in terms of, of the crisis and, and you know um, where we will go um, and and so on. Um, look, the IMF um, has said that over the next two years we could lose uh, nine trillion dollars. Um, you know, of economic activity due to the COVID crisis. 
uh, and um, if, what is nine trillion dollars? It's effectively removing the, the uh, Germany and Japan from the world economy, right? And that is a massive hit uh, to us. Of course, you need to remember one thing, though. Uh, I, I take take these predictions given by global agencies with a bit of salt, simply because in the height of a crisis, you don't have the kind of data you need to make a very um, you know uh, um, uh, kind of prediction that could stand uh, we, uh, you know the time because we'll get more information uh, uh, very fast in the next few days but it's going to be a very severe crisis um, HCCA has done a, a, a survey that results will be announced on the 27th but they did a small webinar and they have released snapshot uh, you know uh, small um, you know, a small snapshot of, of that and you will find that business confidence really has plummeted. Um, the World Bank has forecasted that uh, out of the South Asian countries, um, you'll see quite a few of them go into recession. So you're looking at countries like Afghanistan, countries like Sri Lanka, um, countries like Pakistan, going through to a, a recession, while countries like Bangladesh that had 8% you know, growth go down to about 2 to 3%. So you will have a little bit of growth. Maldives is also going into a recession, Bhutan, Nepal, India will have very little growth because the base, uh, you know, is much higher, and then they automatically have some sort of growth because of the size of the economy uh, and the kind of, you know, economic activity that they engage in. And then the impact also to some, I think, would be a lot less because to take Pakistan and Bangladesh, they are very much impacted by the apparel industry, uh, both both for, uh, you know, uh, the clothing and also uh, final products as well, and the textiles and the final products as well. So I think. Bangladesh, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka in the same boat, um, and also Maldives and, 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 and Sri Lanka, uh, particularly in terms of uh, tourism, uh, will have some severe uh, repercussions as well. Um, so move from the ACCA survey, and I'm going to come to the first poll here as well, right? So ACCA asked their members, uh, and, and good to see about one half thousand uh, of them have replied, now, how is COVID-19 impacting you? Uh, and why is this important? Because you need to understand both the economic impact and also how it's impacting other people for you to create long-term right? And I'll explain that to you and you will understand that um, as we go along as well, right? So far, what has happened is that uh, a large part of the you know, impacts um, have been around, um, you know, it have, have been around uh, things like, employee productivity because there are lockdowns and curfews right and now uh, these days i'm in sri lanka and sri lanka is completely locked down there is you know today we have uh, uh, you know released uh, some of the districts uh, out of curfew but colombo uh, colombo gampana and uh, culture some of the districts where there's most economic activity in the western province was supposed to be off curfew on wednesday but um, and we're all very happy about it but that has been postponed again to monday and there's a lot of uncertainty going on so what is the biggest concern on, in, on employers minds um, and also businesses mind is employee productivity right yes we have these tools that we can work from home but as you can see i'm still trying to get his arm back from um from lahore cc office but his internet is in in in, in chaos and mine um, you know is also uh, can go out at any time, right? So productivity in terms of having that kind of tools that you can be working is, is, a, is a problem. Uh, so this is particularly in the short term. So you see moderate impact uh, for now, everybody thinks, and also, you know, going forward. But bigger, bigger impacts in the next six months or the next 12 months, which are more critical for you in terms of creating long-term value, are around cash flow, right? So we are basically in hibernation. No economic activity is really happening. Um, right, and and therefore problems are not coming to the surface, but they will over the next six months, next twelve months, because we've got to come back, right? Um, and 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 that's where you know uh, the local co consumer confidence we saw in the last trial um, will come into be effect as well, right? So other things like uh, you know supply chain problems, uh, deferred investments are also concerns, but I think the bigger problem in the next six twelve months will be a drop in consumer confidence and more importantly uh, cash flow issues. Um, how are we coming back from COVID-19? Now, why is this important, right? Um, how we're coming back from COVID-19 is important because that will determine how you create long-term value, okay? So there are some uh, alphabetical words that, that, that have been, uh, you know, given um, by various organizations. And I think that um, 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 that will give an impact, you know, they're basically looking at the different uh, styles 
or, or, or the patterns of, of recovery. Okay, so we have a V-shaped recovery that assumes that we will have a very steep um, decline in economic activity and a, an equally, um, you know, steep uh, climb up faster, um, which is was what was initially expected. Um, a W, which is where uh, what, we, what we call a double dip uh, recovery, right? Um, and a, a double dip, dip recovery is where you know we will initially have um, um, initially we will have uh, you know some economic growth as as um, the, the you know the lockdowns and the curfews are lifted. Then we will have a, a return of the outbreaks. Again, we will have um, you know um, lockdowns or whatever. And then finally, we will come up out, out of it as well. And it will be a very slow one. A U-shaped recovery is is what a lot of economists today think um, will will happen. Right? Is where you go down um, relatively slowly, but it's you stay down for a lot, much longer period of time right and even the recovery is very very slow um heaven forbid you know an l-shaped recovery is where you are going to have a longer uh you know um uh, decline in economic activity maybe um you know the outbreak stays for a long time 12 months um and then you're going to have you know zero activity for a long time as we put prioritize um health um another favored um you know pattern of recovery um is the tick shaped one where you again have a steep decline but the recovery is a lot more slower right some have called it the nike swoosh okay, right um and um and uh, you know um and that's interesting um you know kind of recovery so i have friends who are economists who think uh, the swoosh uh you know is the one that is favored um, and then you have the IMF um, that thinks uh, a V-shaped recovery, but over two years, right? Uh, which is going to be there. So I'm going to go to the polls to see what you think about uh, the, the things that I presented before, right? The first one, I want to start a first poll. Um, this is about um, yeah, about you, right? You're the individual. I want you to think carefully. You, right? Not, not the corporate, you the individual. And tell me what keeps you uh, up at night during this COVID crisis, right? So we have the poll. Uh, you have uh, five options, right? The first one, the personal health of you and your family. Will, be, will I get COVID, right? Number two, personal cash flow situation. Very interesting, very interesting. I can see the results move, right? Um, your personal cash flow situation, am I going to run out of money? Your personal job security, am I going to be out of a job as my company goes um, belly up, right? Or, or has to, you know, uh, merge or, 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 or buy another company. Um, your future career prospects, right? And, and that is important as well. Um, you know, competition is disappearing, and that means, um, you know, opportunities for you to move up, opportunities to ask for a salary hike, uh, if at all, right, is a challenge. And the future survival uh, of your of your current employer, interesting prospect, right? Because, um, you know, if um, if you if you don't have a job of your own, how are you going to then look at, um, you know, um, your future um, career and also uh, about uh, uh, you know, future prospects, um, etc. Uh, still, people are voting. Please do vote because it gives. Uh, I'll give you ten more, maybe a little bit more, because I want to get a better person. Only we can, a lot more can vote. Please let us know what 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 concerns you, because we can address how to create value through this. And um, the second thing is, I also noticed very interestingly, um, there was another webinar last Friday by ACC about intergenerational talent and how to manage it. And I found that. Uh, in that webinar, uh, a lot of the people who tune in are millennials. So I, I want to see, um, I don't know the breakup of this one, but I want to see what are your interests. We're moving very fast. I want to see as much of you what exercise your franchise. And so you can see that what keeps you up at night. This is important to kind of inform you. Uh, I'm going to wait a little bit longer, maybe 15 more seconds. Okay, please put in your words so that we can see what, what you think. Um, as well.
Okay. Let's. Yeah. So I'm going to close the poll in about 15 seconds from now. Okay. Let's see, um, so 57% of you said the personal health of your you and your family. Very good, very good, because you, uh, while being accountants or financial professionals, you know what's most important, health is wealth. 10% personal cash flow situation, very interesting. Either you guys have you know, saved out a lot of money or you're extremely um, unaware of, of the kind of challenges you're gonna face in the next six months, interesting. Your personal job security, not much of you are worried. That's very good. That means you have very stable jobs. Uh, your future career prospects, 18%. Um, That's interesting, interesting, very interesting. Uh, and 9% future survival of your current employer. Don't seem to care much about your employers, do you? It's interesting, very interesting. So I'm very happy to see that you, you prioritize your health of you and your family. Very important. You know what your priorities are at the moment. Um, good on you. Second poll. Um, and this one uh, is, is about the recovery. And thank you for everybody who voted for the first one. Um, the second poll I have is about how are we going to come back, right? Um, and that, sorry, I'm going to share the results with you. Sorry, I didn't think you see that. Interesting results, right? Take a moment to have a look at that. Very interesting. Okay. And I'm going to get to poll number two. Hopefully, you can get that now. I'll come to that a little bit later. Um, if you ask me what kind of recovery I'm looking for, I think it's going to be a W, sadly. Uh, and the reason for that is that I don't share the IMFs um you know confidence that we're going to have a quick recovery simply because we ha don't have seem to have a control of the crisis right we don't know we don't have a vaccine um we don't have one you know recognized treatment um and it seems to be you know the curve seems, doesn't seem to have flattened in different parts of the world uh it flares up in one part it goes down in other parts that's going to be a concern and uh, we also have another concern, which is the low oil prices, right? And the low oil prices uh, are going to have an impact on remittances. This is to do with the fact that, you know, Saudi Arabia decided to kind of take on the shell manufacturers. So uh, the remittances that they're going to see from the Middle East for, for Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka, and, and the whole of South Asia, it's going to have a major impact as well. So I think we'll have um, a double depreciation. Where we'll have a small recovery. We go down again and recover again, which is... You know, not the ideal one, but from creating long-term value, it's actually a good one. I'll tell you why. Um, okay. So I have some rules um, that I think which are not hard and fast, right? These are something that you can you know work on. These will create help you create long-term value. So now I applied this uh, some of these rules um, in the global financial crisis of 2008, um, where you know we applied some of these. Um, we also applied them uh, in, in uh, the 2001 after September 11 for the small firms that we were working for. Um, and I remember that we applied some of these in the 1998 East Asian economic crisis. I don't know if some of you remember where oil prices went down to like $8 a barrel. Um, you know, Malaysia, Thailand, uh, and, and Singapore, among other countries, had some problems as well. So, first, um, uh, first rule is share relevant 
useful information only. Right? But what is relevant will change. Okay. Nobody cares because you are not a medical profession unless you are. Right? Nobody cares about alternative COVID-19 treatments. Okay. You have no idea how many CEOs have told me. You know, Imran, I didn't know this person was an idiot. Why? Because they've been sharing all sorts of outlandish content on social media under their own handles. And that creates a problem because people are watching you. And this is an opportunity to make, um, you know, real meaningful brand value for you. So what do you share? You share this. You share information from tax officers about tax relief across the board. Talk about government stimulus packages. To talk about um, you know banks giving uh, all sorts of you know uh, um, all sorts of um, uh, opportunities in terms of um, um, I can see that uh, I think Nizam is back. Good. Um, what we can see is that you can um, you know you can uh, you can create um, you can share information that will have an impact on the day-to-day. Um, you know, operational or future business of, of anybody, right? But what will what is relevant will change. So, for example, if the crisis continues, so today you are sharing because you are concerned and your your colleagues are concerned about medical. So, medical also what you you share is from the WHO or some sort of you know verified organization. But tomorrow you might have to share, and this is painful, legal information about laying off employees. Right. You might think it's not empathetic. You might think it is heartless. But as if you know, if the cash flow crisis continues, you are going to have to share information that is important in terms of the next phase. Right. You might also have to talk about, uh, you know, accounting treatments around going concern, because a lot of the businesses that you are working for may not be good. You might have to share information about different IFRS treatments, depending on you know um, the kind of situation your company or industry uh, is there. Those are coming in the coming weeks, so make sure that you before you share information, particularly on social media, that it is useful, relevant, and timely. Second one, use updated information on the same ACCA study that you see that was shared shows that 47% of respondents, that is members like you, have not performed a financial reforecast since the start of the COVID-19 outbreak. That's almost 50%. So you're dealing with information that is irrelevant, outdated, and frankly useless, right? You need to be doing your cash flow forecast or financial for, uh, forecast, I don't know, maybe even uh, weekly, right? Sometimes cash flow forecast might be daily, because you're, you have to deal with updated information to make relevant decisions. Um, if you look at, uh, you know, um, uh, the kind of concerns that ACCA members have in terms of the coming, you know, uh, months about creating useful updated information. Number one is the uncertainty around it, right? That is why, again, I told you when you have to look at certain IFRS treatments, you might have to look at it. Um, certain things around what, what um, you know, what uh, around the uncertainty that IFRS is creating, sorry, the uncertainty that the crisis is creating, because you don't have the information you need. Second one, a lack of analytical tools. A lot of you have not set up the kind of analytical tools you need, whether it is, you know, the technology around it or even the kind of information feed that you need for it before the crisis. So you can't set it up on the go because a you don't have the resources to do that right remember employee productivity is a concern and also you are unable to kind of um, you know have the information feeds come in at this moment of time uh, poor internal data is a concern poor external data is a concern um, you know weak insights um, th that you can generate across your systems is a problem and lack of future you know, uh, oriented uh, uh, tools. There's a lot of uh, historical information that is coming up, but I, I don't think that you're going to have. Um, 
yeah, Harun, I think, yeah, sorry. Thank you for, for everybody who has, um, who, I'm just checking out your questions. Um, look, so these are the kind of problems that you're going to have. So when you come out of this crisis, you're going to, do, you're going to have a W-shaped recovery, right? So the first thing that you need to do when you come out of the initial crisis, sort out of these problems, right? Um, causing the COVID-19 causing uncertainty, that's across the board, right? And you have now guidance coming up from your domestic accounting body. You have ACCA coming up with it. IFACT is coming up with it. Um, a lot of other organizations are coming up with, with you know, some sort of guidance on how you can deal with the uncertainty. Use it. The tax office is coming up. I've seen a lot of tax offices put up information about dealing with uncertainty. Analytical tools, um, co-internal uh, data, co-external data, these are medium-term problems, but you need to start fixing it now because remember, we are going to have a W-shaped recovery, right? Um, we started off, most economists say we're going to have a V-shaped recovery, then they move to saying a tick-shaped recovery. They are going to agree with me, or eventually that's going to be a W-shaped recovery. Having, you know, having um, that in mind, make sure you fix all of these systems and processes in your organization or even in your individual uh, processes very fast indeed because that is how we are going to create long term right remember we are going to come out of this crisis we are all here because we've come out of all the previous previous black swan economic crises well human the human species is an amazingly resilient organism right um cash flow management will determine post-COVID-19 survivors, right? Cash is king, everybody said that, but I, I still don't see the kind of emphasis on management of cash flow in real. So real actions need to be taken, right? I've seen some organizations, uh, you know, across the board, you see the board come and say, we are gonna do 20%, uh, 30% salary um, cuts for the next three months. Seems them unfair, seems, I don't know, some in some cases illegal, but at least, you know, the focus is on cash flow management because once this crisis is over, from both the individual perspective and from a corporate perspective, you will see the amazing opportunities that are going to come your way in terms of a purchase of, say, a personal asset, the house you've always wanted. You know, how many people have come to me and said in Australia, because I've been telling everybody, if you want to buy a house in Australia, right, wait till the end of 2020. It has been said for the last two to three years. And everybody has been massacring me because that, you know, the Australian property market has only gone one way up. Today, without any doubt, they're coming to me and saying, so how far will it fall? Right? They don't even say that it's going to fall. So it's about, so what I have told them is, make sure your cash flow is ready for end 2020 because your ability to give, you know, replace a deposit, buy an asset will be much higher. Your negotiating power will be much higher provided that you, you know, uh, focus on cash. So take action today and these organizations that have you know looked at cash flow management haven't waited for curfews or lockdowns to be you know removed they've sent out an internal memo they started that process um empathize but don't sugarcoat right this is a critical thing to get right in this crisis but uh, every opportunity you know again and again and again people have told me you know imran uh, this is a uh, Black Swan event, unprecedented crisis. You must have empathy. We must have, uh, you know, we must deal properly with employees. I say yes, very, very, very much so. You need to empathize with personal circumstances. But please understand, the thing about the Black Swan event is it can make or break you, right? And what I mean by break or make or break you is that when you have, when you're dealing with from a family perspective, from an employer perspective, from an external stakeholder perspective. Tell them what you believe genuinely, right? Say it gently, but say it. Because I have never believed in keeping what, um, you know, what I think uh, to myself because I will offend someone. This is not the time to do that. Leadership today is about being bold and decisive. So I'll give you a, a quick example of what I mean. So um, you had many economists come and say, you know, we are going to recover, or even accountants, we're going to recover very fast, we're going to be great. Um, but I have never believed that because I am going, I have been very firm that we are going to have a W-shaped recovery and I've been open. It's easy to go with the consensus with IMF and say, hey, we're going to have a quick B, we're going to come back quickly. They're not. And when you don't, then what happens is you lose credibility for going with the flow, right? 
Say what you believe, say it early, say it diplomatically, but say it. Right? This could be about any decision your organization makes, any um, you know, decision your family makes, and, and make sure it's, it's public, because then people know that they can trust you, because you have got it right, and you've been open about it, and you don't sugarcoat. Uh, another good example, I have a friend who has been advising the government of Sri Lanka because the government of Sri Lanka after the last election has been implementing many tax concessions very quickly, uh, you know, removing all sorts of personal taxes. And he has been openly saying to the president, to the newspapers, look, you know, um, we cannot afford this, right? And today, you know, a few weeks, a few days back, some of these concessions were reversed. And, and you know, the respect that, that the community has for this individual, right, has now gone up even more because he has been forthright and he has always, you know, said what he believes, uh, even though sometimes not so diplomatically, but I'd say do it different. Empathize with the circumstances because we are all human, right? But don't show. Um, so here are your questions. Um, focus on what you can control. Uh, very important part. Now I have been, uh, we have been in, in, in lockdown for about a month um, and I have moved back to Sri Lanka for, for from end of February. So looking at about, I've been here for about 50 days now. Not a single of that day for me has been unproductive, including Saturdays, Sundays, because I realized at the beginning of this crisis, having been through previous crises, right, where I have not been the most productive, so I need to focus on what I can control. So I cannot control as had happened today, right? We had plans for, for, for when curfew was lifted in, in Colombo on the 22nd, meeting scheduled um, country CEOs, you know, with social distancing. Um, everything has gone here within, within 12 hours and we are scrambling to kind of change the meetings, right? But that's fine because I cannot control the, the pace of, of flattening of the curve or, or when a vaccine will be developed or what I can control is um, the working uh, environments or the or working working conditions of my employees, um, or the kind of um, you know uh, operating protocols, um, and maybe operating hours, um, you know, um, the kind of policy decisions that we can take within the organization. We have basically divided everything that we do into two things: things we can control, which we are 100% focus on; things we cannot control completely unfocusing on that because it's a complete waste of time to focus on something that is beyond your control. What you can control is how you react to what you cannot control. So we, within, within you know, minutes, we anticipated that there would be you know, uh, a change in, in the curfew circumstances. We, we managed to reschedule all our meetings very, very fast. Reacting to something that we cannot control via something we can control. Um, Learn to spot lemons. Now, here is where you are going to make a major impact, um, you know, in the long term, right? Learn to spot lemons, but move preemptively to seize advantages. So, what is a lemon? Lemon is something that you are, you know, it's completely useless, but you know, that has been hyped up or so on. What you will see at the end of this crisis is a lot of frauds, corporate, individual uh, frauds that are going to come bubbling up. Um, right, and and uh, you need to keep an eye on them because this is where you bring in, you create long-term value in the eyes of your employer of society. Uh, two have already come up, right? One is Lukin Coffee in China. Lukin Coffee is supposed to have been the next Starbucks in China. They've been playing around with their accounts, and in the last few um, months, it has been brought up, and and the company share price has crashed. So many other things. And I'm absolutely sure had the Wuhan, you know, the COVID-19 uh, which started uh, in China and spread had not affected it first, they would have been able to hide some of these numbers and go on. Second one announced just a couple of days ago is that a Singaporean based um, uh, um, uh, bunk oil trader has been hiding a lot of, um, you know, uh, have been, has been uh, classifying um, a lot of fake items as sales and has been keeping themselves, uh, you know, uh, afoot. Um, they, they, you know, billions of dollars are owed to different lenders. Some of the most defined uh, banks around, right? HSBC is owned about I think, $3 billion, Standard Chartered Banks, DBS, OCBC, some of the organizations that have some of the best analysts around 
have been taken, have been caught by 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 this um, scandal. So you will see an opportunity to you know to find these skeletons in organizations, uncover them, be the be the you know the person that brings out um, you know save the organization maybe. Also, move preemptively to save uh, you know to seize advantages. One opportunity that you will see is the ability to capture market share. Uh, purchase assets that your organization um, has been keeping an eye on for a long time. And this is where you come in, right? So your analysis, you have to keep an eye on not just your organization in this crisis, but a whole series of other organizations, individuals um, that, that you know you or your organization has been looking um, to either purchase or, or, or you know, um, take over or uh, you know, market share that you want to capture. Because your analysis of those organizations will permit your organization or you as an individual to move in very fast and seize the advantages that there is. But be warned, learn to spot lemon because in the process of rushing in, you will see many skeletons come out and, and a lot of frauds being uncovered. So you have to balance this, right? And you have to, the person who balances it, seizes opportunity, takes on new projects, Right. On behalf of your employer, is somebody who's going to rise up very fast in this um, post-crisis situation. Because I'm telling you, I have spoken to some of the largest, um, you know, CEOs of some of the largest South Asian companies, Southeast Asian companies. Um, a lot of them are at home, which is good, and you can get them finally. And a lot of them are worried. That a lot of people have no clue how they're going to get, navigate not just the next three months, but the next six months, and the next twelve months, and the next eighteen months. Because um, the debt crisis that we are going to have is going to come up. Um, look, show clients and staff the light at the end of the tunnel. Many people have been telling me, right, particularly in the, since the beginning of this crisis, for the person who won about this crisis for the last two years, you seem remarkably calm, cool, happy. I have slept like a baby for the last 50 days, 90 days. Why? Because there's no worry, there's no point worrying about the crisis now. What am I? What am I doing for my clients? Is that we are we are finding plans for the next six months, right? Three, six, eighteen months. Because for me, the eighteen months is a critical part of that, right? And I'm showing them lessons that can be learned, the depths of crisis from previous. Uh, crisis, right? This is how uh, you know prices fell. This is how much we you know, almost crashed. How how we have uh, how companies have recovered. Uh, examples from the region, examples from outside the region, and they are confident enough to go with me on this journey to the you know to the other side because they've seen this guy has been consistent, right? This is critical. I have been consistent in what I have been saying. Remember, empathize but don't sugarcoat. So I have been consistent in what I have been saying. Now they are very happy to take with me and go on this journey on the other side, right? Remember, everybody is scared from the president of the United States, um, right? Who's worried about obviously not just re-election, but how to open his country up. To the Chinese president who's worried that um, manufacturing, particularly Japanese-led manufacturing might leave China, right? So everybody is worried. So if you are the confident, calm individual that leads your team forward, um, your career is going to be very good. And I have done that in 2008. And you know, people remember me from that time. And it's been very easy for me to navigate this crisis. So it's about creating long-term value for others by carrying everybody, right? Carrying everybody across this. Um, create value beyond the current engagement, right? Now, what has happened now for many people, including consultants, is that um you know um projects have been stopped right projects have been stopped um projects have been paused um uh, payments are okay um but still you know um there has been um issues in terms of what am i doing now what i have focused and, and many of people i know who are successfully navig who are navigating this crisis is they're looking to create value beyond the current engagement. i'm going to give you an example here right so a few years back um about nine months back, right, on a trip back to Sri Lanka, um, I met with the CEO and, and a group of people in a, in a software company that was looking to, you know, grow their products overseas. And um, 
one of the things that in, in is so I, I asked for the range of products um, and uh, you know they said uh, and they said funny interestingly they said hey uh, we have come up with a uh, pro uh, for a solution for robotic process automation right RPA so robotic process automation and also some retail solutions so um, um, in this crisis um, you know I've had people reach out to me and say hey you know I think I need I don't want to sack my finance stuff, but I need to be able to have a lot more automation in this process. Um, and what I have done is I have linked this company, right, that has a domestically made robotic process automation to another domestic company, and they are now creating value, right? Um, also, why am I linking a domestic company to a domestic com company? Because you need to understand that the US dollar is going to, you know, uh, the, the domestic currencies of South Asian countries are going to depreciate um, over the coming years. And I have thought that the best uh, thing to do to create value for both organizations, obviously we can easily recommend, uh, you know, some of the bigger global players in robotic process automation. It's a matter of just dropping an email, they will send me um, a quote for, for my the client and we will send it across to them. And it's not a big deal for them. But, Think of, of the domestic economic circumstances that are going to come in the coming years um, and create that, right? Same um, thing applies to even competitors. Um, there was an opportunity of creating value. There's a, a tax firm in Malaysia, ACC members that I met um, on, on uh, when I was speaking at the Malaysian Institute of Accountants um, conference last year in October. And, and uh, you know, they are doing a series of webinars. I've, I've seen them um, on, on, on social media. I reached out to them and said, you know, I know people who are organizing webinars in different parts of the world who might want to go to Malaysia in the future. Uh, link them both up again. Um, you know, there is value for both parties. Am I getting anything? No, not at all. But I feel that it's, it's time to create value above the current engagement you are in. Because people will remember this time for the rest of their lives, right? It's like being through the Spanish flu in 1918, the Great Depression in 1930. You will always remember what you did for, I don't know, one month, two months, three months um, during this COVID crisis. And, and, and the kind of value creation that you're doing now will always be there. At capacity to grow digital, human, logistical. Um, look, one of the saddest things I see about the COVID crisis, and I know that that is where you know, we will differentiate um, winners from, from, from has been and losers, is that winners are not putting out press statements saying, oh, we are going to stop um, you know, recruitment, we are going to uh, stop capital um, you know, uh, infrastructure projects. I know cash flow is a problem, and I have been emphasizing the need for cash flow right through. Right? But you know, cash flow is a separate issue from adding capacity to grow, right? And I always remember that. So sometimes you may not have the finances to, to do a course, but you might be able to, personally, right? You might be able to do that course online for free. That is because your mindset is adding capacity to grow, right? It's a growth mindset. And it has to be in digital because the world is going to, you know, it's going to be an exponential growth um, in digital. Human capital, so you need to keep always looking at adding people to your team, right? And logistical, you've got to relook at how how your entire operation happens, because I think there's going to be a massive change in, in the way we operate, both in terms of officers, in terms of you know, um, in storage and etc. 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 How do I know winners are doing this? Because I've, I've people have reached out to me and said, you know, uh, maybe because the employers have told them they're going out, you know, they've been laid off or. or they come, they've laid back Miss Imran, here is my CV. Uh, complete strangers, people I have never met in my life, have reached out to me and said, here is my CV. I'm an accountant with XXX number of years. Uh, can you send my CV out? Now, I feel very bad because obviously all, everybody, including the person sending that, knows the economic conditions everywhere in the world. I don't know any country that is you know, going to be immune from the economic crisis. But I take their CV, and what I do is I just send it out to some Hunters or others that I cast, and some companies, and I have found interestingly, some FCFOs or heads of finance teams or HR teams telling me, "Thank you for this CV." They are actually looking at recruiting. So when I, I'm, I'm a bit surprised. I mean, as you know, right? I'm asking, "Okay, I, what's interesting?" That because they see. So the fun, the funny thing about people who who, who are looking to create long-term values. They are not underestimating the crisis. So they are looking at 18 months as opposed to people who think that's going to be a V-shaped account, right? 
But at the same time, they also know the value of adding capacity to grow because the human species, as I told you, is a very resilient one. We are going to come back very strong from this crisis and going forward. So as an individual, right, as an individual, um, and also as, um, as, as being an employer, um, I think that you need to understand that you need to grow continuously during this period. Digital, so for example, even your personal devices in terms of, because working from home in a W-shaped recovery is going to be a big human, right? So make sure you have your digital devices from the corporate end, and also human and logistical um, as well. Um, the, the last rule I have for you, um, and I'll come to your question, is one more poll. I hope we can run that one. Um, uh, the, the last um, thing that I want you to understand is where you really, 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 really create, uh, create value is getting involved in transforming business models, right? Leading initiatives for sustainability and business resilience. A lot of, let me first uh, come to the second one first, right? Sustainability. SEC is a big promoter of sustainability. A lot of people think, uh, and this is where you can differentiate, uh, you know, people who are creating long-term value versus people who, you know, looking at the short term. A lot of people are thinking that sustainability-led initiatives are going to go away as you focus on cost and 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 uh, you know um, just look at recovery. But I can assure you, right? Particularly coming from Australia, where you're going, to, we had one of the worst bushfire epidemics last year. And, and I know that it's going to come again in the future, right? Could be this year, could be the year after. Sustainability is going to be the, on the agenda going forward. It's not going to go away, right? Because our planet is sending us signals. And if you are involved in a sustainability initiative, you might be worried today. But I assure you that in the future, this is going to come on to the fore as well, because we have promised that as a humanity, we are going to not only really come back, we are going to come back in a completely different way. Um, business models, look, current business models are predicated on certain assumptions, right? Um, and, and those assumptions that business will be as normal have been shattered in ways that one cannot imagine. And what you're going to see is that, um, you know, you're going to, your business or your individual as a person needs to relook at, right? You need to look at your business model. Um, you need to focus, you need to understand a few key things here. Going forward, people would, because of digital becoming more, right? People will want to see a more personalized offering. They want to see, uh, you know, uh, a very circular kind of, um, you know, um, economy. So they deal with you on a corporate and individual basis on a long term thing on multiple fronts, right? Not just one. That is why things like Amazon is, while everybody else is suffering, right? Amazon is doing really well on stock exchanges because they just don't only deliver, they are in data, they are in multiple things. Right, and and they want you to you are you need to be very sticky your with your customer in many ways. So I know that the Sri Lankan apparel players, for example, um, might come back a little bit stronger than say the Pakistani apparel players, Bangladeshi apparel players, because they've embedded a lot more um, in 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 the ecosystem of of their of their clients in terms of design, in terms of co-production on, on, on uh, sustainable uh, garments, etc. Et Obviously, spending on these things will, will take longer to recover than basic garments. But in the long term, I feel that the ability to dump a supplier who is so embossed, you know, embossed in, in, in the business model of the client will be a lot more difficult than, than, than you see. And going forward, you need to be really in the lives of your customer or, or your company for you to create long term. Third one is business resilience, right? Um, those of us who live in South Asia or have lived in South Asia regularly um, know that we have we have all sorts of crises um, that comes right in, in, in this period. You have um, floods, you have earthquakes uh, in, in, in parts of Pakistan, Afghanistan. You have um, you know all sorts of um, all sorts of natural disasters, and then you have uh, human-made disasters, um, also this. So, so we are naturally resilient um, in, in terms of, of individuals. But whether businesses are resilient, well, we'll see after this crisis. I don't think we have built the kind of processes and robustness in the business model that we have, we should have um, before this COVID-19 crisis. Um, and I think it, this is an opportunity for you as an individual to push your employer to 
to create better business resilience, right? And I'll give you an example here. Uh, I had an interesting question in the panel, uh, in a webinar that I was last week, um, and that was from um, the head of the uh, uh, Sweden Sri Lanka Business Council, Leif Olsen, about the IT BPM industry in Sri Lanka versus our competitors. And I, he made me think, and I had to look at it. So because Sri Lanka has gone through a lot, um, you know, in terms of the idea of war and so on, our IT BPM companies from day one has built in such a, a dramatic uh, business continuity planning, right? They don't even get a contract from a foreign party unless that business continuity planning is at a top level. So we have, to some extent, particularly I, I, even our BPM companies, which I didn't, you know, in the Philippines is struggling with BPM. Optus has gone to the extent of allowing people, you know, Optus and Tesla are big employers of, of the Philippine BPO industry, right? And they have gone to the extent of, Tesla just basically hired 2,000 new people in Australia just to, you know, on a temporary basis to you know, work. But Philippines have to even go to the extent of, you know, letting people work from their home, even though there are information security problems. So if you have, because this particular IT BPM industry in Sri Lanka, particularly the IT has been so resilient, right? Their business model is much better than our competitors. And here is an you know, opportunity for, for this small industry of about a billion dollars to kind of you know, really take that opportunity and go forward because business resilience was much stronger. Okay, I'm going to now come to your questions. Let's see if there are any questions. Um, sorry. And I have a couple of questions, okay. Oh, oh I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm not sure. I think you, I moved. Okay. Right. Um, I haven't seen any more questions. I have one more poll though. I'm sorry if we have technical issues i'm really sorry about that um i think internet everywhere is a bit of a challenge okay i have a second poll for you um and this is about how you think we will recover and i'm going to be available for um uh, in terms of your um I'm going to close the webcam for a second because uh, my internet says that I am uh, I have some issues, so I'm going to close my camera. Okay, I'm sorry about that, uh, and I'm going to launch the second poll. Just want to see what you think uh, um, we are going to have in terms of a recovery as well. I just want to see how that how you think. Please do what. Okay, uh, we are still distributing the poll, I'm sorry. So I'll wait for that. If you have any questions, please do um, send them out. Yeah, um, good question from, from um, Ramiz. 
Um, you asked the question about um, uh, sorry. I'm sorry about the internet. I'm, I'm still waiting for it to come back. I hope you can hear me. Just give us a few minutes. I think it might come back. Um, please this point. Um, empathize. Um, empathize, but don't sugarcoat. Look, I mean, what I meant by that is, uh, say, for example, you, you are very close to your employer, right? You know your employer. And um, what happens is you 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 feel that you um, you know when you go to the employer and say hey, um, you know they you know that he or she is constrained by personal circumstances has a big family there are issues but there is a cash flow problem uh, in the organization um, you need to be able to empathize you know uh, sympathize with with the circumstances of your employer but still bring it to his or her attention uh, in terms of the kind of um, okay. I'm going to close the poll, sorry. Um, so um, you need to be able to go to the employer and say, "Hey, you know, I have, um, I have, um, I have to share some bad news with you. But the, here is our, you know, a cash flow situation, um, our company situation, um, and you need to be able to be very upfront with them. That's what I mean by empathize, but don't sugarcoat. Uh, and you need to lay everything out in front of him or her, particularly under these circumstances." Um, the second thing I wanted to talk to you about also another example your co-workers or employees right if they ask you what do you think of this crisis and um, you know how will an organization survive um, depending on your confidentiality obviously you cannot share everything um, you know depending on the confidentiality and your ability to um, you know um, uh, what you can share you need to be as you need to be um, you need to, um, you know, you need to share with them your genuine, um, candid opinion. Because here is where they're asking you something because they trust you, right? And 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 therefore you cannot, um, you know, um, in process of trying not to empathize, you know, be not, you know, trying to be empathetic with them telling them something that they can then decide um, on their future. For example, they may have another job offer. You might think that not, might not be possible, but it is possible, right? Uh, there might be an opportunity for them to start their own business for some reason. Uh, this is a great opportunity to go out, venture, and do things um, on, on, on many things, right? Uh, and by you, um, you know, um, you know, uh, Sugarcoating things, people may not make the kind of decisions that they're supposed to make at a point of time like this. That is much more critical um, as well. Okay, um, let me look at whether there are any more questions. Sorry about the internet connection. I hope you are back. Sorry. Okay. Um, I don't see any more questions and we are at five o'clock. Um, I apologize about um, the connection. I kind of anticipated that, um, you know, we might have that issue um, and uh, with curfew, uh, there's very little uh, one can do in terms of, of kind of diversifying your, your connections as well. Um, thank you very much for your time. Uh, the slides will be distributed to you. Um, if you have any questions, remember this saying before I want to uh, close with this saying, right? It is not the strongest of individuals. Now, I have murdered uh, Charles Darwin, right? I have murdered Charles Darwin, and I'm saying, uh, um, uh, you know, I've changed uh, what he allegedly has said. It is not the strongest individuals that survive, right? Nor the most intelligent. Okay. 
but the ones most responsive to change. And in our lives, COVID-19 and black swan events like COVID-19, right? This is a defining moment in our lives. We didn't create it, right? We didn't, hopefully, you know, you're washing your hands and you're doing social distancing, so you're, you're not really contributing to it. But this is a defining moment in your life to make, um, you know, um, a massive long-term value creation as an individual and as part of an organization. And I think what you need to do is you need to make sure that you are bold, you are decisive, and, and you know, you are, um, uh, you are bold, you are decisive, uh, and, um, you know, um, um, empathize, but not sugarcoat in your responses. I'm very happy to see a lot of things that's going to be U-shaped recovery. Very interesting. I didn't really come to that poll. I want to conclude with that as well, right? Um, uh, quite a few of you think it's a W-shaped recovery. Um, nobody thinks it's a V-shaped recovery. Very interesting. I find it very, very interesting. Um, uh, and, uh, and I think that um and i think that um that uh, a lot of us hope that it's a u-shaped recovery because it'll be a more stable you know recovery w is going to cause a lot of a lot of problems uh, for a lot of us but uh, it also is an opportunity for you to create opportunity twice okay so there is opportunity in w shape recovery to create value twice um and that is something that you need to keep in mind as well um and if you have any questions Please don't uh, hesitate to send me a question to my email, imran at pressing.com. Uh, just mention that it is from this webinar because I've been doing a, a few. Um, and um, also, leave, uh, you know, uh, feel free to contact me on, on LinkedIn as well. Um, I love to connect with people on LinkedIn, right? Uh, people send me all sorts of things except, you know, um uh you know uh memes and stuff which i don't particularly like but anything from you know um uh, event invites to to, to uh, what is your opinion on the economic recovery to think accountancy will go some interesting discussions have flowed uh from very very interesting people um you know you would not believe the kind of people who reach out um on, on linkedin i've i've dealt uh, once with um you know um uh, quite a few uh, two ceos of, um, of silicon valley companies um and and uh, and then and, and so on as well um so remember this again right it is not the strongest individuals that survive right? not the most intelligent but the ones most responsive to change i hope all of you I hope all of you, uh, you know, uh, are able to, 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 to be bold in this COVID-19 crisis and create long-term value. Um, over the next coming weeks and months, I'll share more information on, 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 on LinkedIn. And I hope to be part of uh, with you with, with another ACC webinar as well. Um, please, don't lose heart. This is an, this is an uh, opportunity that you have not created, but you can go forward and, and seize the opportunity as well. Thank you for all of you for joining um, and, and take care.